Welcome to this video where we are going to talk about a Spring Boot REST service. How do you create REST service with Spring Boot? We'll do this in four simple steps. The first one is the setup. During the setup of this particular thing, we would we'll set up a spring, simple Spring Boot application using Tomcat. The second thing we would do is add a GET service to it. And the third thing is to add a POST service. So get and post are request methods and by Spring, I mean by the REST service standards, we need, to edit, we need to follow a few standards when we are creating REST services. So we'll understand them as well. And during the fourth step, we'll learn how to find more details about developing REST services with Spring Boot. Let's get started now. Let's get started with the basic setup stuff. I'm going to use one of the articles that we wrote on our website springboottutorial.com at springboottutorial.com There are a lot of articles in here on how you can do different things with Spring Boot. What you want to do is create a REST service with Spring Boot. So let's pick that thing up. So what you'll learn basically is what we talked about already. What is a REST service? How do you bootstrap a REST service application in Spring Initializer? And we will look at how to create a GET service and how to create a POST service. Also we will be using Postman as a tool to execute REST services in here. So that would be really useful too. Uh, there are a lot of references uh, which are present in here. So this one hour video courses on all popular frameworks, you can try them out, they're pretty cool. So if you don't know about any of these frameworks, then the these references would be of great use. So what we would create in this course? So we would use uh, students and courses. I mean, these are basic concepts which everybody understands. So we pick them up. So uh, we'll create a service to return what are the courses a uh, student is registered for. So we would create a get service for that. And uh, what we would also do is create a simple get service to re retrieve the courses. I mean, retrieve the details of a specific course of a student. So this student, this course, uh, get the details of it. And other than that, we will also get a, create a post service. So we'll create a post service to register a student for a course. So we'll... Uh, start with what is rest so a lot of people talk about rest 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 restful services what are these so rest is actually a abbreviation for representational state transfer what does what rest specifies is just a set of constraints so it says these are the constraints you need to adhere to and once a service adheres to these constraints it's called a restful service so what are these constraints what are the constraints of restful web services or actually, these are the constraints of any RESTful services in general. Web is one of the mediums. Web or HTTP is one of the mediums to expose RESTful services. It's not the only way. You can even expose RESTful services on, let's say, something like SOAP or any of that kind of stuff. What does a typical, what are the constraints for REST services? The first constraint is you should have a client and a server. There should be a service producer and a consumer. So, that's number one. So you, there should be a client and a server. The second one is you should have a uniform interface. So you should always talk in terms of resources. So you should see the functionality of your application and think in terms of resources and you'd be exposing them outside. The other things are that you sh the services should be stateless and they should be cacheable. The last important constraint is that it should be a layered architecture. Client should not assume a direct connection to the server. There's a lot of theory stuff you can read in here. I'll not worry about all that stuff right now. Let's go into the uh, screenshot of the structure of the project that we'll create. So this is kind of the project that we would create in this particular video. So you would have a student service application, which is a Spring Boot application. You'll have one controller exposed, student controller, and you'd have a bit of model because we need to have the details of this course. We need to have details of the student. We have a model object and we'll build a service as well, student service. And we would have unit tests for student uh, controller IT and student controller uh, test. So this is the integration test and this is the unit test. So let's get started with Spring Initializer. So let's go to the website start.spring.io. So just go in there and it's a great way of bootstrapping your Spring Boot projects. All that you need to do is type in a group ID and artifact ID. You can choose com in 28 minutes Spring Boot as the group. You can uh, choose student services as the artifact. So here you can enter com in 28 minutes Spring Boot. Here you can enter student services. You can choose and type in here web and actuator and dev tool. So, and then you can pick them up. So these three dependencies, you can pick them up. Web, 
actuator and dev tools and click generate project. So once you click generate project, you'll be able to generate a simple Maven based project because that's the default and take that zip, uh, put it somewhere and then you'd be able to import it into Eclipse by just saying file import existing Maven projects, copy the folder where you extracted the zip to. So you can put it in here or you can browse to it by clicking the browse button, then click finish and then you would have the entire project imported. It might take a little while, it may take a few minutes for the entire project to be imported, but you should be able to import the entire project in. Once you import the project in, you should be able to easily run it. So you'd be able to do a right click, run as Java application, and you'd be able to run the application completely. So I have it running right now. So let me kill this you can do a right click run as Java application, and you'd be able to run the application up. If you want to understand what's happening in the background, how Spring Boot works, what is Spring Boot application and other stuff, you'll find a lot of useful resources on our website. I'll also put the links down in the description of the video, which you can use to refer to understand what's happening in the background. But what's important for now is the fact that the server has started up. So you can see that the server has started up uh, and that's the way you run your application. So it's using Tomcat, right click run as Java application. That's the only thing that you would need and you'd be up and running with your application. So now that I have the application running, what I can do is add my business services. So what are business services? Basically like in a typical application, you would have multiple layers. You will have a web layer, you would have a business layer, you will have a data layer. The reason why we have this separate are because these layers have separate responsibilities. The business layer is where all your business logic would be. The data layer talks to the database and gets the data. So to keep it simple, we combine both the data and business layers together and we have a business service exposing that in here. So we have a business service which is exposing very simple methods. We have methods to retrieve all students, retrieve a specific student given a student ID, retrieve courses for a specific student, retrieve course uh, based on student and uh, course ID, and also we have an add course method, which would, I can add a course to a specific student. So those are these methods that we have. Uh, there are a few model objects that are present here. Source main, like if you go and look down. So if you search for course.java in here, oops, let's take the complete thing and search for it. The entire code for course.java is in here. So you'd see that the course is nothing but a simple model object, right? I have an ID, I have a name, description, and a list of steps to complete the course. So th this can be a course on Spring Boot. The ID is course one, name is Spring Boot. Description is become an expert on Spring Boot and the steps are learn initializer, learn parent form, learn Spring Boot starter, understand auto configuration and all that kind of stuff could be the steps in that specific course. And the other model object we have is student. So student is nothing but uh, again has an ID, has a name, has a description and a student also has a list of courses he's doing. So we are looking at it from the perspective of student. So a student might have registered for a list of courses. Those are the courses that we would want to put in here. And if you look at the student service, all that it does is it initializes a list of courses. So what we are doing here is a static array list. So we are actually using a static array list to store our data. We are not really talking to a database to keep it simple. So we have a static array list where we are storing all the list of courses. So we are creating four simple courses in here. So, and we have a couple of students doing those courses. So we have course one, two, three, four, and Ranga is doing all courses as well as Satish who's doing four courses as well. And we are creating a small list. Other than that, the business service has few important methods. You ha it has a method to retrieve all the students, retrieve student, retrieve courses, retrieve course. These are all very, very simple methods. You can spend some time with it. It's plain Java code. So you'd be able to spend some time with it and you'd be able to understand all the stuff which is in here very, very easily. So these are the model objects. This is the service that we are creating. So the reason why we create the service is so that we can use that from the controller. So now we have the backend ready. So the backend is just the business service. That's the thing that is important to us. So we have the backend ready and now we can go ahead and add in a get rest service. So adding in a get rest service is very simple, right? You just need to create a controller. I, the annotation at rest controller is the one which is used to uh, say, I'm going to expose rest services. So this controller will expose rest services. And what we are creating in here is couple of get methods. So we have, uh, we are exposing slash student, slash student ID, slash courses. That's the path we are using. In here, 
the one in open bracket and close bracket denotes that this is a path variable. So you can see that this path variable is mapped. Where, where is it mapped? It's mapped to student ID. So what happens is if I say student slash student one slash courses, student one would be the student ID. And what I'm doing is I'm talking to the service and retrieving the list of courses for that. Similarly, I can have student student ID, course course ID to return the details of a specific course of a student. So then I have two path variables, student ID, path ID, and you can retrieve the course like this. So what it's it's a very simple thing. Exposing REST services with uh, uh, Spring MVC is very easy. So all that I need to put is one layer around the business service. The other important thing is the fact that we are using Spring. So we use at auto wire to auto wire in the student service. If you execute the service using Postman, or if you just go in the uh, serve, uh, like go in and type in the URL, localhost 8080 slash student slash students one slash courses course one. So student one, course one. So what would happen is we would get the details of the student one back. So we are getting the students one details back. The magic thing which is happening in here is what well, this thing called list of course. All that we are returning is a list of course and here we are writing a course and how is it getting converted to JSON? So it's converted to JSON because of something called message converters. Spring Boot has it, this, config, this thing called uh, auto configuration, but through auto configuration, Spring Boot configures a lot of message converters. These message converters look at the request and they can identify what is the thing which a uh, client is requesting. If a client is requesting to J a JSON, they would convert this Java object course into a JSON. So that message converter is auto registered with Spring Boot and it's used to convert it into JSON. That's the reason why I'm not getting a Java object back. I mean, I'm getting a JSON response back. So here you can see how to use it from um, Postman as well. So I just type in the URL, I'll select the request method, which is get and click send. And that's it. That's all you'd need to do to execute the service. And you can see the response coming back in here. Next, let's create a post service. Post service is something you would use to create uh, to create a new resource. One of the important things that a post service should return a status of 201 when the resource creation is successful. So here you can see I'm creating a simple student service. So what I'm doing is post mapping and mapping the URL to it. So post mapping would be to create expose this as a post request and the path variable is mapped. The other important thing you would see in here is request body course, new course. So whatever you course you would put in the request body would be automatically bound to the here. So when we execute the request, what we would do is we would put this in the body of the request. In the body of the request, we would put what course I would need to create. So I would want to create a course on microservice. So a student one wants to register for microservices course. So I need to provide the details of that course. I'm providing the details of the course in the body of the request. That request gets bound to this request body in here. So the, the uh, course details gets bound to it. And then you'd be able to use student service dot add course to add that course to the uh, business details. So this is kind of storing it to the back end and once the course is created, if the course is not created, then we are saying no content. So what we are saying is uh, the, there was a failure. So what I'm saying is no, return no content back. And if it's successful, if course is written back as not null, then the course success, course creation is successful. Then I'm taking the, I'm treating the location. So one of the important things with uh, uh, post services is you, is you have to return the URA of the created resource back. So I'm creating a URA of the, uh, created resource. So this would be something of the form localhost student student one slash course slash course ID. So I'll create a resource of that form and I'll return it back. And you can see that I'm created location and giving it back. That's that's basically all that you'd need to create a post service. This example is available on this article. So you can look it up down here as well. Try and play around with it as well. And Executing a post request is very simple, right? So all the details that are needed to uh, register a course is present in here. So this is the details that you need. So name is microservices, description is 10 steps, and you have the steps. And this picture shows all the details as well. When you put it into the body of the request and select the body type and content type as JSON. So whatever we, content we are sending is JSON. And you click the send, then you'd be able to send the request and you'd be able to see the response is 201 status created. And if you look up the header, 
of that particular thing if you go to the headers tab you'll be able to see the uri of the created resource as well so that's basically the thing that you would need to understand about creating rest services with spring boot in this specific thing we like this is kind of a fast walkthrough of this stuff i mean we have courses where we actually build this entire application step by step adding line by line up at in 28 minutes our focus is on making you an expert at Spring Boot. We have created a complete website on Spring Boot at www.springbootshutorial.com. The link in the description of video would take you to a page where you find details of all the courses, videos, and the articles we have created on Spring Boot. If you love our videos, you'd love our courses too. Our courses have great reviews on Udemy. You can see some of the reviews in here. And there are also articles on basics of Spring Boot, auto configuration, startup projects, startup parent, less services, web application, all the code examples. We have Maven projects which are present, which you can directly import into Eclipse and start running them and other references as well. This page would be a great start for you to become an expert on Spring Boot. You might also want to visit our website www.in28minutes.com all other courses other than Spring Boot as well. Thank you for all the support you are providing us. We would not have grown to 52,000 on Udemy. We would not have such great reviews on courses on Udemy without your support. We would not have been able to grow to 28,000 subscribers and more than 3 million views without your support. We want you to learn and make best use of all the courses that we have. Good luck and I will see you in the next video of the course. Until next time, here's Ranga from In28 Minutes, signing off.